Oh no, it looks like the trail's closed. It's completely closed. I want railway. Um, yeah, sorry, no. Whoa, careful, there's trees down. In front of us, we have a sinkhole. No one history. <laughs> this massive mess is a landslide. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm a gun. Um, yeah. Colac Railway Station. Colac Railway Station. This metal sculpture thing outside the Colac Railway Station shows the elevation of the old railway line. As you can see, it just goes up and up and up. We're starting in Ferguson, right there. And this part is all, um, well, it's just, I guess, an abandoned rail line and it's not a path. We're starting in Ferguson and we are coming all the way down to Barongarook and that's where we're going to get picked up. If you look closely, you can see a train. Australian Railway, last train to Beach Forest, 30th of the 6th, 1962, Historical Society. You can see the border of the sculpture thing is actually a rail track. Here is the bus stop. In the bus stop, we have lots of information about the old rail track. I'm just going to tilt on past, if you guys want to know. Pause it, read, let's keep going. We're starting in Ferguson, you can see it down there. And we're walking to Barongarook. History, lots of history, railway history. The coffee pot train. This is absolutely incredible. This is the actual start of the old beachy rail trail. But the first 10 or so kilometers from Colac out to Barongarook doesn't even follow the old alignment. So it's sort of forgettable. So we are just going to walk from Ferguson to Barongarook. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to the amazing hike of the Beachy Rail Trail. I am Les. That is... You man? Laura. And today we are going to embark on the hike. In total, it's like 50 something kilometers. I'll flash it up on the screen. The weather is terrible. The track is actually closed. So technically we're going to be trespassing for this entire hike. So stay tuned, subscribe and believe in yourself. Smash like and jump on board if you haven't already. We're about to embark the hike, except now it is pouring with rain. We knew it was going to rain, but really this soon. Ah! It has stopped raining for five seconds. So we are now going to embark on the hike. Due to the recent flooding, the trail is temporarily closed. Problem is, I've been planning this hike for like three months. Uh, a bit of rain is not going to stop me, but I would not emulate these activities. We are being extremely disrespectful and horrible walking this because it is also closed due to logging. You should not be here. You should not be doing the hike, but we're going to do the hike. 49 kilometers to Colac. We've jettisoned our backpacks in jelly brands so we don't have to carry them for the first day so that'll help us get some speed this part of the rail trail which i believe is not following the original alignment is actually private property and is now owned by a logging company check out the view looking back towards colac this is absolutely incredible one kilometer down on the side of the track here, it looks like we have some either hail or snow. Oh my goodness, this is so inclement! Walked a little bit further and as you can see there's even more snow or ice. According to the news, it's meant to be snowing above 900 meters. I think we're only about 400, 500 here. Ah, the refreshing taste of blue. That's one way to change a tire. Thing is, you need a whole bunch of tires. How incredible is that? Check out these crunchy, encrusted, sprouted Volvos. Buck, and 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 and. Look at this caravan. It's so scenic. I wonder if it's Kim's caravan and if there's water marks on the ceiling. Bow, bow, and 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 and. I'm not too sure if the Beach Forest Communication Facility is still in use because there's no antennas on the mast anymore because they've all been dumped over there. We've almost walked four kilometers so far. 
We're now coming away from the road, which we've been more or less walking along, and we're going all the way down this hill. We're definitely coming onto the old alignment down here. We're walking towards Beach Forest, and I believe this part of the track is the original alignment, but turning around, it's not very obvious where it would have gone, so I'm not too sure. It's all over the place, this rail trail. Due to the fact that the government sold off the railway easement to local farmers, and some of them, when the rail trail was being created, didn't want to give the land back, so they just sort of have to hodgepodge a path, more or less, along the line. As you can maybe see, this is definitely a cutting, a railway cutting, and it's quite thin compared to a normal railway cutting, due to it, the fact it was a narrow gauge railway. Black snail. This one seems to have perished. Ron Kavanagh. Look at the railway cutting here. That is a dead giveaway. It is so drippy. There's like moss, there's ferns. It's like being in a greenhouse. Old Beachy Rail Trail, unique Otways. Otway Rangers Bioregion. Journeying through the Otways presents the traveller with an opportunity to enjoy a unique range of forest environments. Main image and below, cool temperate rainforest. Long stretches of the Old Beachy Rail Trail pass through a special part of the Otway Rangers called a bioregion. This bioregion has certain characteristics which provide a perfect home for small, rare plants and animals. Of the flora and fauna species that have been recorded in the Otway Ranges, many species are considered rare and threatened, including 46 plants, 9 mammals, 32 birds, 2 fish, and 3 invertebrates. The Otway Ranges is generally cool and wet, and rainfall can vary from 800 millimetres to 2,000 millimetres per annum, making the Otway Ranges an important water catchment area for Geelong, Colac, and Warrnambool. These ridges are often surrounded in mist and have high humidity. Lesson learnt. Old Beach Forest Cows Railway Line. Historical plaque about the township of Beach Forest. But this is one of my favorite things here in Beach Forest. And I find the man behind the history incredibly inspiring for these walks that we do. Dedicated to the memory of Cliff Young potato farmer and athlete from Beach Forest. Cliffy Young used to run ultra marathons and he used to train up here running around in gumboots. Just shows you anyone can walk and go anywhere if you're willing to put in the effort and get absolutely soaked. That's looking towards Ferguson, but this sign says the rail trail is that way to Jellybrand. There's a really nice looking old church here that seems to be a cafe or an art gallery. They're all like that up here. But yeah, some interesting history if you so desire. Just like down in Colac, you've got a sculptural representation of the elevation of the old Cows Railway line as you head up. We started in Ferguson, we're now in Beach Forest. We are gonna get to Jellybrand tonight. This building's really awesome. It's a toilet block slash visitor information slash historical area. So get your gunzicular tacticals ready. Beach Forest was unique on Victoria's narrow gauge system since the 1911 extension to Cows was run as a separate line. Passengers changed here. Until 1929, the timetables allowed passengers to go to Colac and return the same day because trains and crews were based here. Access to state forests in the area favored larger operators and Beach Forest became a hub for extensive tramways to the east along the ridge between the Eyre and Jellybrand Valleys. The railway was essential for the development that occurred after the Otway Shire split from Colac Shire in 1919. The trains bought in the first cars as well as gravel for the roads, but the main loads were outward shipments of timber and potatoes. Which just makes it very quite interesting. Building the railway line to Beach Forest 1901, the line was a narrow gauge, two foot, six inches track. Trains. Train photos. Trains. 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 Who doesn't like trains? Um, so many photos! Going home from the races at Beach Forest, 1902. It definitely looks like Beach Forest was a lot more of a hip hop happening place back in the day. And give this video a like if you can. It's greatly appreciated. Someone made a horse stable out of a giant tree stump. It's terrible weather today, but I hope it doesn't get that bad. Heaps of information about the old sawmills that would have once given the logs to the railway up here. They still do logging up here, but it's more plantation based. And of course there's no railway links, it's just trucks. Some more history 
History, history. I know this is a lot less interesting, but I just love how like faded and blue these Otway's pictures are. I just find that really classic and grungy. This is absolutely incredible. Hey human, did you see that or did you saw that? A very early lunch is in operation due to the fact this is sort of the last shelter. If we have it anywhere else, we're gonna get drenched. This is your spoon, because you didn't bring a spoon. I have a spoon, it's in my pack, and I just forgot. The Gunzel is not finished. He still needs to venture out into the rain and film the old balloon loop and yard. Right next to the toilets, we've got an old railway milestone. 124 miles. Beach forest. I love the lichen. The old man's beard, is that what that stuff's called? It is built up on the sign over the years. There's an old jail cell back here. This lockup is a fine example of single cell lockups found in many Australian country towns. They were typically used as a temporary holding place and defined as any building or structure that was used to confine or restrain temporary those accused of committing a criminal act or apprehended for drunken disorderly or riotous behavior. The sign on the front of the building said this jail cell didn't actually see much use. Railway related playground carving. Is that a rail tractor? I feel like this entire area here was once part of the railway yards because the balloon loop is still all the way down here. Like a tractor beam, I am drawn to historic plaques. The beach forest, but a factory. We have the beachy hotel here and we have a phone booth over here. I'll chuck in a few photos of this phone booth from the last time we walked this line in 2019. It actually had a door. I've never seen a phone booth with a door. The door has now been removed, unfortunately. It looks like this man is holding potatoes, which was one of the main things that used to get sent back to Melbourne from here on the train. You wouldn't be able to tell it, but we are approaching the old balloon loop. This sign is so treacherous to get to. It looks like grass, but it's, it's a marsh. There is water everywhere. This is one of my favorite parts of this entire old railway line is the old balloon loop. Site of the original balloon loop at Beach Forest, turning the train. The unique balloon loop and was the only narrow gauge balloon loop in Victoria. The original facilities at Beach Forest were basic and consisted of a three road layout with a shunting neck, a dead end siding to a locomotive depot that included an ash pit, coal stage and water tank. A good shed was located on the south side plus a portable cabin for the station office and three extra portable cabins for the guard, driver and fireman of the locomotive based at Beach Forest. All train services on the line were originally run from Beach Forest to Colac and return with the guard in the role of travelling station master. The balloon loop for turning complete trains was an afterthought when the issue of rotating the rolling stock to even wheel wear was brought up. The engineers considered using either a turntable or a triangle before deciding on a loop. It was constructed in 1903 at the east end of the yard as an extension to the shunting neck. It's now raining again, so we can continue the walk back to Jellybrand. <laughs> there is a signpost here. It is so horribly faded. I honestly think this might have been burnt. And just like that, it is sunny again. It looks like we're approaching a former station site. Ditchily. The sign says we're meant to walk down there. I don't know if that's right. Not too sure, but I want to read this plaque first. <laughs> Some interesting history about the old Ditchley railway station, it closed with the line back in 1962. The sign says to go down into the abyss, um, but there's also another beachy sign that says go this way. So I'm going to go this way instead of going into a jungle. I think it's safe to say the football field doesn't get used much anymore. We're now walking on Old Beach Forest Road, heading south back towards Jellybrand. This road snags in and out of the rail trail, so I assume we're gonna bump into it at some point and we'll just catch up with it. And maybe that was the alignment, I don't know, but then we will meet up with it shortly at Didmont. <laughs> you look gorgeous. That's looking up Old Beach Forest Road, going towards Beach Forest, and you can actually see down in this valley, 
there is the original track and I believe the alignment. So that's probably where we would have gone if we went down that massive cliff of doom. Too late now, but we're about to meet up with the line again. Hulking husk. Look at this hulking husk. Here we have the remains of a steam traction engine. Marshall, Sons & Co, Gainsborough. Dinmont Railway Station. Garrett Loco taking water at Didmont in 1955. An essential water supply for the railway. This tank was at the midpoint of the climb of 300 meters over 10 kilometers from Wimbler to Beach Forest. Oops, yeah, we definitely missed part of the alignment. There is a replica station building here. Here's an informational plaque. It is plastered in slimy stuff. So try to read it. Dinmont Station opened with the beachy line under the name of Wea Poronia. I cannot read that. Which is the Gan de Broad. Local Aboriginal people, I also can't read that. Word for tall timber. The station remained this name until the 9th of December 1912 when Didmont was substituted. That's looking back towards Didmont Station. You can see the old embankment here, and this would have been a level crossing of um, Old Beach Forest Road. And you can see the old railway water tank. And you can also see Laura. But you can definitely see the old embankment where the railway line would have been. This rainwater tank, which is still functional to this day, albeit quite rusty and holy, was once used to fill up the steam trains on the Cowers Crow side of the Happenhouse railway line. If you look really closely, you can see the embankment. The train would have parked literally right here to get water. And you can see the remains of the embankment and the alignment going back that way towards Colac. Due to the fact that I'm walking over here now, we're definitely not going to be going on the alignment for this next little bit. But there is a historic plaque about the water tank. Didmont water tank. Watering stops along the line. You're looking at the Didmont water tank used to fill the locomotives after their long haul up from Jellybrand. The original tank was replaced by this structure in 1954. <laughs> Farewell original railway alignment. Let's just walk along a poopy road again. I want railways, not these roads. I want to walk along the original alignment. I want history. <laughs> Um, yeah. I don't think this is railway related, but I think it is local area sawmilling remnants related. Not sure, but this all looks very sawmilly. I wonder if this is an original pair of wheel sets from the railway. Not too sure, it might have just been for a local sawmill tramway, but it's fascinating to see this stuff. It looks like this piece of farm equipment was also made out of an old wheel set of like a tramway or something like that. Same with these, you can just see sort of the conical shape. So that is fascinating. Some more rusty remnants, including another amazing old wheel set. Due to the girth, I feel like that would have been for a tramway. That's just way too wide to be a normal steel track. That might have ran on wooden boards. All right, my prayers have been answered. The rail trail now comes back down here and follows the original alignment. <gasps> we are coming towards the alignment. Finally. There's the old steam train filling tank. And you can see this farm shed here, which is obviously still in use. And this is the old alignment. So I'm wondering if that shed being there, because it would have once been right next to the railway line, was once used as like a good shed or some type of loading facility for the farm here. We are now back on the alignment after floundering on our own part and then taking us on the road. As we pass the 41 kilometer point, you can see the original railway cutting. As we come out of the cutting, you can definitely see the old embankment where the railway would have once been. Dairy. There probably was a tree here at one point and you can see that it's fallen and the farmer has just chopped it up like a giant carrot. Bon appetit, vegans. You can see the old straightaway of the rail track. There's a fox, a little fox there. That's looking towards Jellybrand. And down the side of the embankment here, we've got like fatal remnants. Remains of a really old stove. Yeah, there's heaps of garbage and stuff thrown down in here. I wonder if they did that to sort of help the embankment stay upright or they're just complete douchebags and they just chuck the rubbish everywhere. 
we have a still in place wooden telephone pole. That is amazing. That is incredible that the insulator on the top is still intact. Check out this bench. It is covered in sprouters. Here is a signboard about the wonderful rainforestness topped by a sprouter. Hello, sir. How are we today? Keeping dry, I hope, sir. Looking good, sir. That fleece is looking dapper. We're now entering a pine plantation. This isn't just a normal gate. As you can see, there is the Victorian Railway inscription on here. Kimmy, can you please dance and spin around and throw your arms in the air, please? Oh. The entire rail trail is technically closed, so you would never attempt this because you obey all the rules, don't you, viewers? But, human? Um, so at these markers, you get uh, data, and so you can call for emergency help if you need to, and you can quote this number so they know where you are. But you would never need that because you're not going to come here if the trail is closed due to safety reasons. Whoa, careful, there's trees down, you could have tripped. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're down here. Hey! <laughs> At the moment, we're just in the middle of a plantation. We have an echidna. You can see it's in its protective ball shape. We have a piece of one of the original insulators that would have gone on the telephone poles next to the track. Lollies. 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 We're approaching another former station, but we're also about to enter the active forestry area. McDevitt Railway Station information. Have a look, but mainly check out this awesome old picture of the train, it's got a wide shot, there you go. This tow truck was not here as of a few days ago. The area around the railway line is used for logging and it's harvesting time. So they've closed off the beachy rail trail. Down there, there's gonna be logging trucks and excavators. That's where you would normally go, but since they're definitely here today, we're just gonna walk on old Beach Forest Road. So once again, we will stray from the original alignment and walk along a Poopy road. Ah! We've just jumped off the rail, Charlie McDevitt. Unfortunately, we'd have to walk along the main road to Wimbler. This isn't a bad place to be. It's just not railway related. Ah! Fatally crispy land cruiser. There's actually a house on this road. It should be a very tranquil place to live and I've got a whole bunch of garbage so I would definitely want to live here because that's what my house would look like too. There's those funeral type flowers on this side of the road and they've spread down here. I want to go on the rail alignment again! On the side of the road in the bushes there is the crunchy remains of a caravan. This is beyond crunchy. Sprouters! still see some of the lino. Yeah, this thing is fatally crispy. It looks like garbage, but you've still got some dirty aluminium. You've got some copper wires. Hey, there's still money to be had. Old Beach Forest Road, and down there possibly might be the rail trail, but we can't get to it. You can see the OBR marker. That would be the rail trail down there. It's just, we can't get there. There's too many blackberry bushes. Right, here's the road, and here's the rail trail. We're just gonna scramble on through. We're now back on the rail trail. Um, yeah, sorry, no. This is fascinating. To this day, the telephone lines still run along the old train track. Thing is, with MBN, I don't even know if this is even working anymore, but it's still here. Roadway crossing. That's where we came from, and as I said, it's completely closed. So do not emulate our activities. We should not be here. 
We are trespassing as the sign obviously says. We are now at Wimbler Railway Station. Pan of the informational plaque. I love that old photo of station. The train station opened with the line and closed with the line. There's a shot of the old train station back in the day. And if you look really close, it's really faded, but that's probably some wagons. Wimba. Oh, I've ruined my shot. What? Um. On this post, it says nine kilometers to Jellybrand. Three crazy now, I'll take three now. On the ground in this cutting, if you look at the gravel on the floor, it sort of looks like sleepers have been extracted from here. Don't know, it might just be a coincidence. Looking towards Ferguson, looking towards Jellybrand, I think we're now branching off from the original alignment again because we're going up a steep hill and hugging the road. My assumption is the train would have continued forward this way, obviously going up a gradient that steep where they're walking up is not train friendly. There appears to be a house possibly right in the middle of where the train track used to be. That's probably why the diversion has occurred because we're literally going on the other side of the road now. Oh no, it looks like the trail's closed. Yeah, we're gonna have to go home. Yeah, pack it up, we're going home, guys. Oh no! We're very much walking along the road now. I'm wondering if this line here, this little crease of trees, that might have been the original alignment. Not sure, but where we're now is definitely just a bike path. The beachy transported out of the West Otways, all the timber, pastoral and agricultural produce and livestock generated from the land along the railway. The train also carried local residents who journeyed between the stations or made it to beach forest or colac for business and shopping. Once upon a time, that would have been a train. Banu. Here is the plaque talking about the history of this railway station. I believe that might be the last ever train to run on the line. This one just might be a normal one. Banu. Historic timber box culvert, recycling in the early years. Beneath your feet lies a replica of an early timber box culvert. That's what it looks like today. I think it needs to be re replicated There is cone! There's a massive puddle. Timber pile bridge bearing the load. You are standing before the remains of one of the original timber bridges located along the beach forest line. That's the bridge there. You can barely see it through all the overgrowth. Here's a shot of the Trussell Bridge. Up here, there's numbers. Sprouters. You can see how this tree fell down once upon a time and crunched remains of the bridge. Look how rusty this support is. It's barely holding in there. That is looking back towards Ferguson over the old trestle bridge. Jelly brand ballast siding laying the foundations for the future. In 1902, the Victorian Railways opened a quarry of hard sandstone four kilometers south of Jellybrand to provide materials for track construction. Yeah, really cool. The beachies beasties, animals along the old beachy. As you travel along the trail, be aware of the many animals that share this habitat, including the serpent. Serpents. I hope there is no serp serpents. I hope there is no serp serpents. I hope there's no, I hope there's no, there's no, there's no serpents. We're out here in the middle of the paddocks and there could be a slippery, slimy, wriggly, slimy, sliggery, slopinity man. Um, yeah.
Welcome. We have now arrived in Jellybrand. It's almost six o'clock. It's time to get our bags, which we hit in a very private location. What's more secure than an abandoned women's toilets? I'm now gonna scale this to go get the bags that we put on, on the way up here. <laughs> All right, in toilet view, here we are. Let's get them out. Now, how do I get out of here? Laura, how does it feel to have completed the first day of the hike and be in Jelly Brand? Sore. Sore. Human, how does it feel? Feels good. Feels good. What are we doing now? Uh, zonking. Then what? Uh, cooking dinner, maybe. What's happening here? Cooking dinner. What's on the menu? Vegan shepherd's pie. Sorry, are you one of those Vegas? So we've softened some onions and now we're making peas. This is just gourmet. This looks absolutely incredible. So adding little seasoning packets to the mashed potatoes. What is that? Giovanni's best. Serving up this meal. Vegan shepherd's pie on a hike. This is way too gourmet. Alright, here's your meal, sir. What the heck? How does someone cook this on a hike? Wait a minute. It is is that Floyd Bromley? Well, thank you, human, for this absolutely excellent meal. The day's not over yet. We still need to do dishes and go be homeless somewhere. Packed up and heading to the secret sleeping location. All right, it's not looking the greatest. I haven't actually had a very good look at this abandoned house. I just know it exists and it's a roof and we don't have a tent. Checking out the kitchen, what we're dealing with. Some like stickers. You can see the other side of the wall of the water damage that's occurring in the laundry. Standard little kitchen here, nothing flash. Little oven. They definitely did not clean the stove when they left. Sink, hey, I wonder if the water works. No, nah, no. Nah. All the windows are boarded up, so we don't need to worry about people seeing our torchlight, which is one benefit about being in here. We've got remnant Pokemon stickers here. Nothing in the cupboards. Lounge room. Lounge room. These light fixtures are pretty classic. This fireplace is just chunky. This wrapping paper looks very, very dairy. There's a door that goes out there. Um, kitchen and just to the left here is the front door and now we'll head down the hallway just in here is the laundry slash toilet and there's just heaps of water damage um, this door doesn't seem to have a handle but it probably was just a cupboard ah here's the bathroom I wonder if the lights still work no it's in a bit of a state sink looking crispy very like 1980s stickers there nah nope bath type situation shower is looking very crispy. Still got the head. Everything's still here. Um, Ugh, yuck. Yeah, this room doesn't look too bad. Um, what's it like in here? This room's not too bad either. Um, at the end of the hallway, we've just got a little linen cupboard. Someone's jumped up in the attic for no apparent reason. Then there's another room here. So, there's that too. Oh, uh, the bedrooms aren't too ominous, so I don't mind sleeping in them. But the rest of the house is quite damaged and moldy and I don't like it. Laura, how is it? Oh, it's very good. It was probably once a little girl's bedroom and now it's our bedroom. While those guys are setting up in the other room, just so I bring you back to the laundry to show this water damage, just shows you what happens when a little roof leak is left for way too long. Look at this chaos. It's dripping because it's raining outside just stuff everywhere. The whole floor is like buckled. I don't want to the sink, but there's really nothing left in this house. This is honestly the most interesting thing here. These old coasters, more cat food. Look how verdigris that is, that is insane. One great thing about this house is someone did break in, but the door they broke in from is the only way in and out of the house and it can be locked from the inside. So no one is coming in here tonight, unless they want to re-break in. There was only ever one toilet in this house. And there she blows. 
This toilet has not been flushed since this was abandoned. We've just made a group consensus. We will actually use this old toilet, but we'll top up the cistern before we leave. <laughs> I guess maybe if we come back next time, we can use it again. This toilet has not been used in so long that we just need to flush it simply to just get it primed. Possibly the weirdest toilet cleaning ever, like <laughs> just using a stick to clean up the spider webs. Get a base level. I wonder if there's any red bags. Check out that paint peel on the ceiling in the toilet and that old globe. This place has been left empty for a long time. And you can hear that it doesn't fill up anymore because there's no more water. So we'll use our drink bottles to fill that up. And then this will be our emergency toilet for tonight. Chopping it up. All right, one of the most amazing houses ever. Hey, is anyone in there? Hey, welcome to my crib. Come on in. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. We've got the mansion bed in this corner. We've got the really Gucci bed in this corner. And as you can see, this is Dior 90s pink speckled overlay. This is absolutely incredible. What about the uh, amazing overhead lighting? Oh, I'm getting a new chandelier. This is some amazing accommodations. Here is our humble setup for tonight in this amazing abandoned house. The three Stinge Musketeers are now heading into the main CBD of Jelly Brand itself. Surprise, surprise, there's nothing open except for a payphone. Human, what are we doing? Uh, we're doing our strategic toilet break for the night. We are also filling up three bottles to be able to use the toilet in the location. Just brushing our teeth, washing our face, washing our hands. Yep. Who needs a caravan park when you have a covert location? I hate this floor. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> I <laughs> I'm cleaning my rotten wet feet in this like abandoned sink with a drink bottle. This is the most depressive abandoned homeless urbex. I don't even know what this is. It's just crazy. This is so tough. <laughs> I know this feels, this feels so wrong. Yeah, I don't even know if I should be watching this right Can you all put water all over the bathroom bar? Are you homeless? Yes, I'm Look at this spray mark. The dye from my boot. Oh my goodness, we are so homeless right now. This is just incredible. Just setting up your laundry in your abandoned house as you do. It's completely normal to do this, right? This is something that people do. Oh, oh no, no! <laughs> How are you, comfy? Yes, but I'm also scared of everything. You look nice. Room for one more. Yes. Bunking down in the finest it's accommodations boring. in town. Just got your amazing blanket and your amazing sleeping bag and your amazing accommodations. Farewell, everyone. We will be going to sleep in this uh, location. We'll just put it that way. Um, we will see you tomorrow. Farewell. Good morning, everyone. We're now packing up our amazing home in an abandoned home. We're about to leave. Time to do a half flush. Well, that wasn't really enough. Maybe a bit more. There you go. Serpents. What happens if there's serpents? We don't know. We will get bitten. Serpents. What happens if there's a serpent? A snake man with a scaly hand. Serpents. Putting on sunscreen. There are UV rays out here. What is that? Is that a beanie? This is the inside of my beanie. Dry myself down. Dairy. What's happening here? We're making hot milk for our cereal and the rest of the water for tea. Gourmet breakfast. What happens if there's serpents? If there's serpents, there's serpents, there's serps. 
We are now entering the former Jelly Brand Railway Precinct. Here we have the former Jelly Brand Railway Station. As you can see from every single angle, it is an absolutely incredible piece of preserved history. This is absolutely incredible. Bit of a tilt of the little veranda here at Jelly Brand Railway Station. Jelly Brand! Jelly Brand! It's a bit of a shame because this building is sometimes open and there's historical displays in there, but unfortunately it is locked. All the old pictures and stuff in there. Little old station building. Just really can't see much without getting in there. Um, you can sort of even tell that the glass on the station is old. It's just got that sort of look to it. Sprouters! Today we're going to continue the walk from Jellybrand up to Barongarok where we're getting a lift back into Colac. We have an old timber tramway, timber moving cart thing. As you can see, these trams would have run on wooden tracks, not metal tracks. And as a result, their wheels are way fatter. So that's what I was sort of talking about with those wheels we saw yesterday. They were probably for tramways, not railways. Jellybrand Camp Warren Progress Association, great Fully acknowledges the donation of this load of timber by Calico Timbers Colac. Um, got another historic plaque with some fascinating old photos. Pause if you're interested. Quick close up on all of the photos because they're really cool. Here's a close up on the old yard diagram. As you can see, there isn't much of the yard left today. Obviously, got the old station building, but um, it's pretty. Pretty much a park at this point, and there's a sculpture there we're gonna look at in a second. We've seen this same sculpture so far in Colac and Beach Forest, but here's the Jelly Brand edition, and it depicts sawmilling, which would have taken place in this area, and a lot of the freight coming out of Jelly Brand would have been wood. Which is, makes it very quite interesting. Farewell, Jelly Brand. We're gonna continue the hike back to Barongarook. Let's get started. just come across this bridge which I wasn't really thinking was a real alignment I think this might actually be the original alignment here because you can see a whole bunch of like telephone sort of signal things and if you look really closely there's sort of like a moundiness in this paddock and it sort of looks like it sweeps around and goes that way can you see what I mean by the mound that sort of looks like an old railway alignment we've now made a sharp turn gone up a hill and then we're going over here so yeah I'm not too sure we're following the real alignment but it still should be a interesting scenic walk even though it's raining again it is so muddy this has been like one of the most treacherous walks I've ever done the track now proceeds to go up a giant hill this was definitely not the original alignment <laughs>
are here and we're gonna go over the road to have lunch. How are we everyone? We're having lunch. What's on the menu, Laura? Um, murdered people rolls. Yep, we got murdered animal wraps. We've got tea. It's all happening, guys. Get excited. Thoughts? The meal was definitely needed. So we've finished lunch. It's now about 2.20 and we're running incredibly late. We had to change the pickup time to like two hours later, up to 7 p.m. And um, yeah, we've got 10 more k's to go. We're just walking up like massive hills. This is definitely not the alignment. All this is is a workout. And I'm a Godzilla workout. I will admit it is very scenic though. This is absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible. We came from down there, but you can see the original alignment, which the path does not follow at all. That's looking back towards Ferguson. And this is actually the rail trail in their defense, and that's looking towards Colac. The path we've been walking on has just been up and down these mountains over here. This here is the actual train alignment. We haven't been on the alignment for a good 30, 40 minutes. We're at the corner of Cashins Road and Robinson's Road. We have a very epic railway remnant in this river here. If you look really closely, there's actually an old piece of railway track blocking the river. That is amazing. This looks like they used a railway track as a support to carry a water pipe over the river. We're now stopping for an emergency bliss update not going well the reason we're getting so many blisters is because our shoes and socks are just drenched in front of us we have a sinkhole this is one of the reasons that the Otway Shire Council has decided to close the rail trail temporarily personally I don't find it that hard to walk around it but some may differ Finally, after climbing Mount Everest of pointlessness, we're back on the original railway alignment. Not for long though, not on this rail trail. Barongaruk water tank, 1920 to 1962. A drink for thirsty locomotives. To your right are the remains of six footings at the site of the former wayside tank near Barongaruk. In 1920, the original Barongaruk watering stop was relocated to this site at the bottom of the bank as the gradient was more favorable for loaded trains. The water tank was relocated two kilometers south of the original site as this made it easier for the locomotive drivers to start their loaded trains moving up the hill from this spot. This stop was in use until the railway closed. Backpack, 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 backpack. This massive mess is a landslide. This is yet another reason why this trail has been closed temporarily. Bit of a landslip. Dairy. The magic of the forest. Enjoy the magic and the tranquility of the different forest types as you stroll along the trail between Magios and Cashin's Roads. Laughing Cucoba.
that's looking back towards Ferguson and that's the path we've just been walking and it actually follows the original alignment. As you can see, if you look closely, this would have been the original alignment. It vanishes into those trees. Looking towards Colac. Unfortunately, from here on outwards, the rail trail does not hug the alignment and it just goes along roads. It's so pathetic, really. They should just end the rail trail here. For this part of the rail trail, they don't even make a concerted effort to even make a pedestrian path. You just walk along roads until you get to the CBD of Colac and you get almost run over in some parts. a lot of pain this has only been a two-day hike this this is not good all right we have now concluded our walk we'll see you tomorrow morning at Colac railway station Colac railway station Colac railway station one thing I find fascinating about Colac railway station is they still have the old steam train filling spouts in place Old goods platform here. Platform here. That is looking towards Warnable. As you can see here, we have a disused goods yard sort of thing. I'm gathering there would have been sort of a transferring platform of some description where they would have ferried the goods from the narrow gauge railway onto the main broad gauge railway to Melbourne. Yeah, and that's looking back towards Melbourne. To my knowledge, at least, there is no remnants of the Beachy Rails Trail connecting to this line. My final thoughts on this rail trail was it was excellent. I think it's a very good hike. It's not a good rail trail because it is very unfaithful to the true railway alignment. And as a railway fan, I'm kind of just here for the train stuff. Like I like hiking, but I'm here for the trains. So if you're barely following the train line, it's a bit like, why don't I just go to another rail trail? Like the Mansfield line or something where it's pretty faithful the original alignment there's lots of trestle bridges and stuff like that so very good hike not such a great rail trail but i do understand that the line closed down in 1962 the land was sold back to private interests and by the time they wanted to build a rail trail people just didn't want to give back the alignment so they did the best they could with this railway line but it still doesn't change the fact it's just not a super great rail trail would i recommend it yes but if you're really after railway history I would just come in the car, do some key points, but I wouldn't walk the whole thing. All right, we're officially vlogging in public. And with that, I say, this is the end of the video. We've made it to Colac, and now we go on the main line train back to Melbourne, just like the freight and all the people would have come all the way from Crows, I still can't pronounce it, came here, got on the train and to Melbourne or to Warrnambool. Thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. Dairy. All right, Future Les here. I completely forgot to mention my merch store. I have a whole bunch of grouse t-shirts and various other Fogarty Avenue tidbits, which I designed grouse new logos for. So if you wanna be Panda Explores, wear this, or even Jay Boston and wear that, you can link in the description below to grab some of that grouse merch.